So today, I'm going to show you how I set up the Facebook campaign to drive leads to this book. I'm going to show you how we got all the copy. I'm going to show you how we set up the Facebook pixels to not only identify leads, but also engage leads, which is what the $100 million leads book is all about. I'm going to show you building the entire campaign from scratch using 322 Dynamic Creatives so that once we set this up and we hit go, like Ronco, we can set it and forget it. And all it's ever going to do is just get better over time. We're even going to set up an automated rule so that as it gets better, it's going to increase the budget to scale automatically. This is how you manage a Facebook ad campaign to drive millions in revenue that takes less than a half an hour to build and less than one hour a week to manage. So today we're not in the office. I'm actually in my living room on my laptop because I'm going to drive home just how easy this really is. With that being said, let's take a minute and then we'll get started. It's intermission. If you want to get the SOPs and frameworks that I use to scale all of my brands and all of my clients and partners and the people that I've taught around the world to build eight and nine figure businesses for the better part of a decade, check out down below the very first link is the Facebook Ads MBA program. It's the single best investment that you can make. I will work with you directly to give you support for life to make sure that your Facebook ad account is set up in a way to get you the success that you deserve. More success, less stress can be yours. And with that being said, let's get back to it. Now, I'm super excited about what we're getting into today, but before we do, just go take a second and smash the like button. I think it's right there. Yeah, go ahead and smash that. Subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Um, this is going to be super fun, and I can't wait to share it with you. We also might be joined by a couple special guests during this. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. Everything is going extremely well. And now, Showtime. All right, so the very first step is let's go to the website and take a look at what we're promoting. Now, this is the $100 million leads lead capture page. We have a lead form on this, which is great. Now, when you fill out this lead form, we're going to fire a lead event. There's also opportunity after that to take further action. And we're actually going to trigger another event that we're going to define as an engaged lead. That's a custom event that we're going to build into the code of the page. And I'm going to show you all of that in a little bit. To start off with here, this is acquisition.com, the $100 million leads, live virtual event, Saturday, August 19th. Register down below, it couldn't be simpler. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need when we're going to build this is ad copy. Now, one of my favorite things to do for ad copy, and we've covered this in other videos, is to scrape the page that we're promoting to find the best keywords and to also take a look at the videos that we're using to promote it. However, if you take a look at this page, there's almost no information. Alex has done a tremendous job of building the hype just around his personal brand. But we do have a video that's on Alex's YouTube that he's been using to promote this. This video is highly edited, scripted well, and Alex is extraordinarily specific on the terminology that he uses. So let's go to that video and use it as our source material for all of the copy we're gonna write with our Facebook ads today. So we're loading up Alex's YouTube here. So right away, we come to the, Alex's page and the very first thing, the default video that plays is the announcement video for the leads book. And we're gonna just go ahead and use that as our source material and then go to ChatGPT. And I'm not only just gonna show you my prompts, I'm going to share with you in the description the actual conversation from everything that we do today. So you don't have to copy and paste my work. You can literally see every step that I do with 100% transparency. All right, let's get to it. So Alex has got this video up here. I've got it on mute so it doesn't play around in the background. Now we're simply just gonna grab the share button, copy it. Now, the next thing we gotta do is open up ChatGPT. 
So we've opened up chat GPT. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new chat and we're gonna go to GPT-4. We're gonna use some plugins. So the plugin we're gonna use today is called VoxScript. It's free, it will allow us to transcribe YouTube videos. Now remember, Alex is extraordinarily conscientious of the words that he uses, the angles and the intentionality of his marketing. So because we already have the highly produced and finalized video from YouTube that is his first, hey, how are you, knock on the door, we're just gonna go ahead and use that to write all of our copy. So let's go in and start a conversation. The first step is we're going to ask ChatGPT, I need 20 sets of ad copy to use as a Facebook ad headline. Now in a 322 ad, we're only ever gonna use two headlines. Remember it's three creatives, two headlines, and two primary texts but we're gonna get 20 and then go to another tool to validate all of those for click-through rate and search rate and make sure that we're actually communicating to our target audience and the way that they're communicating to us so we can maximize the estimated action rate and the efficiency of our Facebook ads. So we've also gone into this and said, please write this in the style of Alex Hermosi. And we want it to be in his voice. In order to get that, we're gonna say, I want you to take a look at a video from Alex Ramosi and use that as the source material. We also want the copy to be written in a short and simple manner. Because remember, it's gotta fit in a Facebook ad headline, so the characters are constrained. And simplicity is one of Alex's key tenements. So let's incorporate all of that into what we're asking ChatGPT to do. And the last step here is I'm telling it exactly what I want this copy to do. I want it to get somebody who stops their scroll to watch the video or look at the creative to want to click to take further action. And with that being said, I say, hey, ChatGPT, let me know when you're ready. And we push go. Boom. Chat's gonna come up and say, sure, I can help with that. Provide me the specific URL. And because we're using VoxScript, we can type in the URL directly and it will reference that video. It's going to watch the video, transcribe the video, use that information to then write us 20 Facebook ad headlines. Boom. Now what I love about this is it's not just spitting me out the headlines. Because of the way we've written this prompt, it's letting us know what it's seen and the way that it's thinking about the content that it's analyzed. And it's given us a lot of options. Remember, the goal of this is to peak interest in the landing page, which is 100% true. And we set that tone in the prompt. Now we're gonna use another tool that I love called vidIQ to validate these and ultimately see, does this vernacular, does this string of characters, does this copy match the way people are talking and also resonate with the way that they're searching in a style that also seems a bit unique and won't get us into too much competition with the way other people are talking so that we can stand out. So to do that, we simply open this up. We're gonna open up vidIQ. And now we're gonna dive into the keyword opportunities section on vidIQ. And this is really simple. Now, all we're gonna do is put the copy on one side of the screen and vidIQ on the other. And we're just gonna work our way through. Copy, paste. Now, if we look here, we got one that's at a 62. That's great. We don't ever wanna use, if we can help it, copy that's outside of the green. Now this one says exclusive bonuses away at the $100 million leads launch, which is 100% true and super engaging, short and punchy. This is fantastic. We also have very low competition, so we're gonna stand out in the way that we're communicating. And we have a search volume of nearly 1,700, so this is in medium demand, which is fantastic. We're communicating with people the way that they're trying to communicate with us. That is essential. So let's see if we can't find any other ones. What I like to do here when we have a winner is just go ahead and write it in the message. So we have another one here. Your chance to be a part of the $100 million leads phenomenon, which I love, this is really good copy. Again, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna come down here, we're gonna just punch it in. Now, if you notice 
the copy length is getting a little long. To be completely fair, something we're probably gonna do here is pick one of the long ones and then also mess around with vidIQ and I'll show you each step of the way to come up with something shorter because we want to make sure that every piece of copy shows up and when people are on their phones versus their desktop, when their zoom on the computer is different, when the resolution is different, when they're on a big screen or a small one, we're going to have a different character allotment before it just goes dot, dot, dot and then truncates everything else. So in the interest here of making sure that we're learning while we're moving forward, we're gonna do a copy test of short and long form. And I'm super excited to show you how to do that here in a little bit, but let's see if we can't beat a 62. Now look at this, we've got a 66. This is better than the other two. And to be completely fair, when I'm looking at it, experience the unforgettable. $100 million leads launch event. That is exactly what we're trying to do. And then looking at the other ones, this is perfect. So I'm actually gonna take this and we're gonna replace the other two choices. Boom. Now let's dive in and see if we can't beat a 66. That is excellent, by the way. I rarely ever see things over a 70, but we have nearly 2,000 in the search volume and our competition is below a 10. It rarely gets better than that. So here we go. Now we've got the 66, but remember we want to try to also have a long form and a short form because we want to make sure that every character is included. So let me show you a fun little way to do some work inside of vidIQ. And one of the ways we can maximize our short copies to make sure we're using Alex's name. We should leverage some of the brand in here as an alternative, right? It's long tail non-branded versus branded search. We have to incorporate that level of thinking into our ad. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go back to one of the suggestions here that leverages Alex's name. And we're gonna use some of the other tools in vidIQ to help us find the best version of a short form copy. So we've dropped in this join Alex Hermosi in the biggest entrepreneurship event. And we see here on the right hand side that the related keywords, Alex Hermosi is actually what's doing all of the work. So we're just going to click on that. Now we have a 68. We can't just have Alex Hermosi as the headline. We're going to need a little bit more information than that, right? So what was the elements of the copy that didn't mention Alex Hermosi that really crushed in the ones that worked? The $100 million leads event, that's the piece that's missing when we just mentioned his name. So what if we include it? What we have here is a 55. Now, part of the reason that this is a 55 and not much higher is because the competition is higher. And to be fair, that makes sense, right? There's a lot of people buying keywords and terms and trying to promote things related to Alex Ramosi. We get that. But we also know that we're less concerned about the competition here when we're using branded terms. And to be fair, Alex Ramosi $100 million leads is the most branded term possible. When you see an ad that comes by with that headline, you know exactly what it is. And what we need to remember here is the human eyeball tracks from the creative to the headline to the primary text. So if we have an ad headline that ultimately reinforces what they're seeing in the creative, that can overcome some of these less than 60 options. Now, I'm actually really happy with this. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and use this today. We have a very short one that says Alex Ramosi, $100 million leads. You literally can't get any more succinct and to the point about Alex Ramosi's $100 million leads event launch and have it be any shorter. That is maximum efficiency. Ogilvy would be happy with this. And we also have a longer form copy, which is Experience the Unforgettable, $100 million leads launch event. 
So the next prompt we're gonna use here is, I made two sets of ad copy to use as Facebook primary text. We're being very specific about where this sits in Facebook ads. And again, we want it to be written in the style and voice of Alex Ramosi. So we're gonna reference that same video again as the source material. However, we're now gonna say that this is going to give additional context to the creative that we're gonna use and the copy that's gonna be used in the headline that we're gonna provide. So we're gonna be able to say, these are the two ad headlines we've chosen to use. Take into context, not only the way that Alex speaks about it in that promotional video, but also the ad headlines that we validated against vidIQ, indexing it against Google search to make sure that we're understanding the way to communicate with our target audience and the way that they wanna communicate for the best estimated action rate and click the rate possible. Now, what we've done here is say, I have the two headlines ready. So I want you to ask me for those headlines and the video link. Let me know when you're ready. We hit go and chat GPT is off to the races says, I'm absolutely ready to assist. Could you please provide the two headlines you plan to use for the Facebook ads? Well, since we copied it before, let's go ahead and use them. Now, what I like to do here is be, again, very specific. The quality of the response you get is based directly on the quality of your communication and directions that you give. So here's how we do it. Here are the two Facebook ad headlines we are going to use colon paste one and two and then it says after that please share the youtube link so we can just go back up copy the youtube link so we can say here is the youtube link you asked for paste and boom chat gpt is off to the races again and bot script is transcribing that video and we're gonna get a very well written out bit of copy now something that's very interesting here is chat gpt is writing the copy specifically to be paired with that headline however because it's both referencing the same source material and because we are being very specific with the type of content that we're going to use as our creative and i'll show you that in just a bit these are both of the same concept. They can be used interchangeably, which means our 322 ad is congruent. That is the secret power. Now, when it came back to us, we have some really great copy, but there's something to be concerned with. It's using words like you and your inside the copy. Now, that's not always the worst thing, but it can present a bit of a red flag and artificially inflate our CPM. So let's modify our original prompt specifically to rewrite the copy without using those key words. Please avoid using the words you and your and your with the imposter. Save and submit. Now remember, you can always go back and edit the prompts that you've given. So when you look back at this on the log, you're actually not gonna see the original one, but I want you to see the entire process with complete transparency. Now, what I love is we have two very succinct ideas with very well thought out copy that is 100% in the voice of Alex. So we're pretty much good to go. With that being said, let's dive into Facebook. So let's get started in building our campaign. We're gonna hit new campaign. We're gonna hit leads. We're gonna hit continue. Why? Because we're driving leads. Let's go straight for it. And the leads campaign options have changed inside of Facebook so you can still use it without using lead form ads, which is fantastic because we're going to fire the lead event. So we want to take advantage of advanced matching as much as possible so that broad targeting is as powerful as it can be. So let's go ahead and name this campaign Alex Hormozzi's $100 million leads book launch event promotion. We're going to come down here and hit advantage campaign budget and drop in a thousand bucks. Side note, this works if you're doing $20 a day or $100,000 a day. This just happens to be the budget for this campaign. Don't let the dollar amount scare you. Now we're gonna go ahead and create our first ad set here. Now we're gonna make two ad sets today and they're going to be complementary dynamic creative tests following the 322 method. The first creatives we're gonna use today are just normal images of Alex, thumb stopping pictures of his face. These are probably going to appeal to individuals who already know who he is because let's be fair 
His total addressable market of folks who already know who he is is in the millions. And if this does a really good job of being mid or bottom funnel to get people across the finish line, that is fantastic for us. We're trying to maximize the efficiency here. And if that is a piece of the puzzle, then we're doing a great job. We should never focus purely on the best top of funnel or the best bottom or mid funnel creative. We should have a strategy to address all parts of the funnel in a cohesive, coherent, and complementary fashion. So this is going to be Alex Hermosi headshots. Love it. Now we're going to go to our website, of course. We're maximizing the conversions. We're going towards the lead event. And we're going to click on Dynamic Creative. Continue. Now our audience, 18 to 65 plus, this campaign specifically is for the United States. We're going to do no exclusions and we're going to use advantage plus placement. Now, I know folks will be like, well, why aren't you excluding people that have already bought from him and everything else? Because if folks are excited about this, the odds of them engaging positively is high. And if they've already engaged and they're not likely to take action, maybe they'll see an ad once or twice, but they're not going to engage with it heavily. So Facebook's advanced matching is already going to know who's going to respond positively and negatively to this. And to be fair, positive engagements on our ads are only going to help our CPMs. So next, let's build the ad. So now let's go to build our ad. We're going to go to our ad creative section. And when that pops up, we're going to go to the business and we have an Alex Ramosi $100 million leads folder that I've uploaded already. So we're going to take these three headshots, hit continue, and bam, we have our creatives in here. So now we need to add copy, right? So let's go back. We're going to make this half the screen and grab the primary text that ChatGPT made for us. Here's one. Great. We're going to add a text option. Here is two. Please be mindful when doing this that you don't include the quotation marks. I see that about 5% of the time. It's complete human error. It happens to everyone, but double check your work. And now let's grab the headlines. Boom. There we go. Headline number one. And here we go with headline number two. Fantastic. Now the only thing we're going to need is to drop in the URL for our ad. So let's go ahead. Acquisition.com backslash leads and drop in the URL. Boom. We're good to go. So that is our first ad. Now I said we're going to go ahead and make two ads today, and we absolutely are. Now we've grabbed headshots, but we're also going to use video. Now what we need is three videos to utilize for this. So my favorite thing to do is let's go to the organic social. So we can go to Alex's Instagram and find all the videos that have to do with the launch of the $100 million leads book. Now we have this one, the content unit. We also have this one, the leads ad. And one more down here that we have is the to get engaged leads piece. Now, these are the only three videos that Alex has published since the announcement of the $100 million leads launch event on August 19th. So we can just use these three creatives. Alex is incredibly intentional with the video that's up here. So we already know it's on brand. And because one of these videos is basically just a snapshot of the announcement video we are already referencing, we know that the copy, the creative, and the intentionality are completely congruent with everything we've already done. So we can literally just drop these right in and they'll be completely in line. Now we have a concept that is based on headshots of Alex and a concept based on videos of him doing the work to promote it. And we're just going to leverage that for a 322 ad. Now I happen to already have these assets and I've already uploaded them into the Facebook ad account. So let's go ahead and build our ad. Create. This ad set is going to be Alex Hormozzi promotional reels. And we're going to copy that. Also name it the ad and hit continue. For here again, we're using the website. And as we scroll down, we can see we are going to be targeting the lead event, right? And we're going to hit dynamic creative. Yep, that's exactly what we want. We're going to use the exact same audience, which is broad, 18 to 65 plus in the United States and advantage plus placement. So this time we're going to use videos. So let's hit select videos. And we're going to go back to this business folder and utilize the three videos that we've already identified. We'll hit continue. Awesome. And we're going to go ahead and use the copy that we've already made, right? So we're going to grab this, 
drop into our primary text. We're gonna add one more text option. We're gonna grab this, drop into our primary text. Remember to be mindful of those quotation marks. We don't wanna use those. And we're gonna grab the headline. Boom, love it. And the other headline. Boom, love it. And we're gonna drop in the URL for the page we're promoting. Awesome. Now a quick note, if you notice, we're doing a concept test between images and video. We are also, because we're using the same copy in both concepts, running a copy test. And as we look at the results of this over time, we might very well see that one of these sets of copies is just a lot better than the other one. Or we might see that there's no real difference at all. Either one of those, whether it's a win or a loss, tells us a lot of information, which is incredibly helpful for what we might do for the third, fourth, or fifth concept when we run this, is do we use the same copy or do we replace the one that's a loser or the one that's a winner both times to find a second version of copy that works? for our business objectives. We have our campaign. When we click into our campaign, we've got the promotional reels, the video concept, and we have our headshots, the images concept. Now we're gonna ultimately be optimizing for the lead event. And I'm gonna show you one more thing before we go. Remember I told you I'm gonna show you the code that you can install on your website so that you can track not only leads, but engage leads so you can do a qualitative analysis, not on just the cost per lead, but how effectively you can drive engaged leads with your lead gen efforts. Now, the reason this is really important is a lot of folks will just say, I can get you a million leads for dirt cheap. Well, there's a golden rule in lead gen. Basically, the cheaper the lead, almost always the worse it is. This is a way for us to do a qualitative analysis of the leads so that ultimately we can focus on, do we want more leads? or do we want better leads? And this is really important based on how our funnel works. Now, in this case, the funnel is purely software. So it's 100% a volume game, and there's really no added cost if we have a bunch of bad leads and a bunch of good leads. However, if you have a call center or you have a funnel that requires human effort, you're going to ultimately hit a capacity of how much work people can do. And when that happens, you're gonna to wanna to understand the value, the volume, and the cost of good leads versus bad leads so that you can maximize the efficacy and profitability of your lead generation efforts. So last step here is I'm gonna show you the pixel code that we're using in this campaign. And to be fair, I've obfuscated it just a little bit because I don't want you to necessarily see the pixel ID, but you can 100% go check it out yourself. So the first one we're gonna run is a page view event, right? We just wanna make sure that we're understanding that people are going to our page. The second one also makes a lot of sense. This is just a lead event. Now, here's the magic. Remember when I said you're going to go to that lead form and fill it out and there's additional actions you can take afterwards. What we're going to do is fire an engaged lead event when people take that second action. Something Alex is a big fan of is showing initiative and an engaged lead. And you'll learn a lot more about this when you get to read the hundred million dollar leads book. But just getting somebody's information is far less valuable than getting somebody who legitimately shows interest and is willing to take action. So let's track those people separately. And when we go to our columns inside of our Facebook ads manager, we're going to see not only leads, but also engage leads. And we're going to be able to see which concept more effectively drives leads versus also driving engaged leads. We're going to be able to see conversion rate. We're going to be able to see the cost per, which is going to allow us to identify the value, the volume, and the cost of each one of those leads by concept. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you here today is how to set up an automated rule so that you can have this campaign scale automatically so that you can set it and forget it. Now, internally, there's a lead cost target of $15. So we're going to make sure that if we're getting leads more effectively than that, that we can scale into the margin that we've created. Now to make this work, we only need to really launch one Facebook automated rule. And the business rule we're gonna leverage is, if the leads over the last seven days is coming in at an average cost below $15, let's increase the budget by 5%. 
We're gonna do that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I hear you, you say, well, 5% is barely anything. 5% a week is 3X a year. 5% three times a week is 2X a month. Now this campaign is ultimately here initially to promote the launch event on August 19th. But as soon as that passes, we can absolutely swap out the ads that we're using to promote something that's more evergreen. And because we know the value, volume, and cost of those leads, and ultimately the profitability that we're getting from the funnel inside the business from those leads, we're going to continue to be able to scale and do this 100% automatically. And that all we're ever gonna need is every couple of weeks, maybe we launch another dynamic creative if we need to. So the way we do that here is simple. We're gonna go to rules, create a new rule. So we're gonna call this rule PGS, shorthand for performance gate scaling. This is the $100 million lead campaign. And we're gonna say $15 CPL plus 5%. Now we know exactly what this is ultimately going to do, just by the name. Now we're gonna apply this rule to all active campaigns. And our action is to increase the budget by 5%, and I hear you out there, but how can you apply it to all the campaigns? What if I'm running a bunch of other campaigns? Don't worry, we're gonna address that point here in just a bit. Now we have a maximum daily budget cap of $5,000 that we're gonna be willing to spend per day. We also wanna have this action occur only once a day. So let's set some conditions. The very first one is going to be campaign name. The campaign name, needs to be $100 million leads. If that's not in the name of the campaign, then this rule won't run. So now we can apply it to all active campaigns, but it will filter out any campaign that doesn't contain specifically dollar sign, $100 million lead. And we have only one campaign that's gonna apply to, but if we decided to run other campaigns, it would automatically apply to those as well. And that's sort of the trick. We could also just do hashtag PGS. There's a million different ways of doing this, but you wanna use inclusive and exclusive logic here at the name of the campaign or ad set, God forbid, if you're using ABO. Now the next rule we want is cost per lead. Now you will find the opportunity for cost per result, but I find that the cost per result functionality breaks a lot of times and can run into a lot of other issues. So instead we're gonna say cost per lead, meta pixel, is smaller than $15. Because remember, that's our target CPL. We're gonna do time range of seven days. So we have a trailing seven day average. And we're gonna have this run once a day at midnight. It happens to be Pacific Standard. Now, what we're gonna do is only let this run on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, the reason, I'm Morrison. Now, the reason we're only gonna run this on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is because we wanna make sure that we can track the halo effect of this Facebook ad campaign on our email and search efforts. If we have a very good day, we don't want it to scale like five times back to back to back to back to back and ultimately push us well over that CPL target. So remember, this campaign is set up for us to set it and forget it. And if we do literally nothing and we hit our CPL target, we're going to go from 1,000 to 5,000 a day in less than three months. That's fantastic. And at that point, if the effort is still net positive and profitable, we can raise that limit from 5,000 to 20. I've done this with brands where we've gone from 1,000 to 100 in less than a year. This is 100% possible. And this software to do it is free. You never have to touch budgets ever again. We can go ahead and hit create and we're done. And that's basically it. So from Morrison here, there you go, and Barkley's outside, I just wanna say thank you very much. Um, this is how you should be setting up your Facebook ad account to again, set it and forget it. Because we have two dynamic creatives set up in the 322 method, we're not going to actually need to address the creative in any meaningful way for weeks. And because we're not touching it, Facebook's machine learning is only going to get better with the assets that we have. And because this takes place as a part of an omni-channel marketing effort, 
we're going to see better efficiencies over time. And when we get better efficiencies, that automated rule is going to increase the budget, which ultimately means we're going to find a time when that rule just won't fire anymore. And when that happens, that is when we're actually going to have to go in and isolate our best post ID, drop it into a winner's ad set, turn off that test potentially, and launch a new one. And we're going to run a 4PI analysis to make sure we understand where in the funnel we have a gap by understanding how Facebook is using our ads. So that ultimately our new creative test accomplishes business results. This is how you manage Facebook. This is how I'm regularly managing eight and nine figure businesses working less than an hour a week. And if you're putting any more effort into your Facebook ad account than this, you're working far harder than you should to get far worse results than you deserve. And remember, you deserve more success and less stress. So with that being said, if you have any questions about this stuff, go ahead, drop it in the comment section, tag me on social, I'll reply back to you. And we know that this is gonna be phenomenally successful. I have very little uh, fear about the $100 million ads launch not being effective. There's already over 10,000 purchases and it's not even launched yet. So that being said, down below, you're going to see links for the Facebook Ads MBA program so you can learn all of the standard operating procedures and frameworks that I use to scale eight and nine figure businesses on this much work. And you're going to learn every step of the way, not only how to do this, but also how to project manage everything that happens now that you've freed up all of your time so that you can work on your business instead of failing inside of the ad account. So that ultimately you can fire your agency, save a lot on your overhead and maximize your earning potential. You're also gonna see links for Disruptor School and for Disruptor Agency if you're interested in getting to a business partnership with me. So for myself, Morrison T. Puppel up over here and Barkley who's living his best life being the porch dog, I just want to say thank you very much. And remember, you will see in the description a link to the ChatGPT conversation so that you're not just going to have to try to copy what I said today. You're literally going to get complete transparency into every step of the way of every single thing that I did. And so with that, thank you very much for your time. I know this has been incredibly important for you and you've spent your time with me and that's incredibly important to me. If you're listening on the podcast, you should probably go check out the YouTube channel because there's a lot of video on here that we don't necessarily normally have. And YouTube thinks you might like a couple of these videos. Don't forget to smash the button down here. And until next time, I'll see you on the internet. Bye.